I was in my senior year of college at University of Wisconsin. Like most mornings, I woke up and was making my coffee and breakfast, getting ready to go in for classes and turn the TV on and just saw in shock and in horror when um, you know, the second plane hit the building. I had already enlisted in the National Guard years earlier, actually out of high school, enlisted in the National Guard, actually just as a way to help pay for college. I felt like if there was gonna be uh, a war and if we were gonna respond to these attacks that I had to do my part. So I asked for a transition from National Guard to active duty. And after I graduated in 2002 and, and received my commission, I was commissioned as an active duty Army infantry officer. And I remember uh, almost as clearly as it was yesterday, walking in to my company commander's office that um, early January day and saluting him and you know, saying, Lieutenant Crow reporting, sir. And he looked at me and said, you know, outside in formation, is a group of 50 paratroopers. And that's your platoon. Uh, we're going to war in a couple of months. Get ready and train them well. And that was um, what I now refer to as a, a bucket of cold water moment. This felt like somebody had uh, poured a bucket of cold water over my head as the gravity of the situation really sunk in. And he wasn't wrong. Just a few months later, I found myself sitting in a sand dune in Saudi Arabia with my platoon getting ready for the invasion of Iraq. What about that experience, uh, being in Iraq, being in Afghanistan, you think informs you right now as a, a lawmaker? I sit on the Armed Services Committee now uh, in, the, in the Intelligence Committee, so I'm one of the few members of Congress that sit on both these national security committees that oversee um, our, our policy, our, our conflicts, our intelligence services and agencies, um, our, our, you know, our military. Every time I'm sitting there, I think back to Private Crow, you know, that young teenager at the very end, receiving end of the policy made in this town. And I realized that when decisions and policy are made here, they reverberate and have these effects downstream on all those privates. And I think about that and it has a, a gravity for me uh, when we have these debates and, and kind of a, a seriousness uh, when we um, talk about things because it's just not abstract for me. And because 9-11 influenced you or led you on a path uh, and was a pivotal moment for you, do you think that there are any, any ways that that event informs you as a lawmaker? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, first of all, there was a loss of innocence, I think, that we all experienced on 9-11, uh, this loss of security. And I, to this day, believed uh, in the response in Afghanistan and making sure we were responding to those who attack us. Um, I, I firmly believe that we did the right thing in doing that. But then after we addressed that threat, you know, how did we allow this to go on and on? So uh, that's one of the reasons why I've been one of the, the, the voices pushing for Congress to retake that power, to end these authorizations and these blank checks that allow these wars to go on in perpetuity, retake that power, start having the conversations again as a country, the tough conversations, about when it's right and appropriate to send our men and women overseas on our behalf.